Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to build this, a 5 inch FPV drone with the DJI O3 air unit. This is going to be a really balanced build because it's made with budget friendly components that still offer really great performance. Plus the DJI O3 can record 4K video on board. 5 inch drones are a favorite in the FPV community because they have a great combination of power, agility, and speed. Drones like this can easily reach over 100 miles an hour which makes them a lot of fun to fly. But keep in mind that all that power comes with some serious noise, they can get pretty loud. But if you got the space to fly, a 5 inch drone is definitely a must have for any FPV pilot. In this video, I'll guide you through the entire build process step by step. Anyways, let's get on with the build. First of all, for batteries, I'm giving a big shout out to CNHL for sending over some of their Speedy Pizza 6S LiPos. I already use a bunch of CNHL LiPos because they're usually the best in terms of price to performance, so they're a really good value. And plus, these Speedy Pizza LiPos are yellow, so they're going to match our yellow-themed build very, very well. And when they say I was already a fan of CNHL LiPos, I'm not kidding. I've spent hundreds of dollars with them. They just make really solid LiPos for a very good price. I've bought all of these shown here. For the frame, we're going for the SpeedyB Mario 5 Advanced Frame. This frame costs just $35 on AliExpress, and it's loaded with features like a hard-mounted XT60 connector, hidden capacitor bay, and a dedicated O3 mounting system. You would normally expect these features on like a $60 plus frame, so it's great that SpeedyB can do it just for around $35. Bucks. Also, SpeedyB's traditional yellow colorway is going to be the main theme for our build. For the motors, we're using iFlight's Zing E motors, specifically the 2207 size and 1800 kV. These can be found for around 40 bucks for the entire set of four motors on AliExpress, and I'll be putting all the links to these parts in the video description below. For the flight stack, we're going back to SpeedyB with their value-focused F405 stack. I have their most affordable version here, which is the version 3 flight controller with their 50 amp ESC, and this costs around $50 on AliExpress, but it can drop down even lower during their sale periods. And also, if you want, you can upgrade a little bit so you're free to use the version 4 flight controller or also one of their larger 55 amp or 60 amp ESCs as well. For our radio system, we're going for Express LRS with a SpeedyB ELRS receiver for around $10. The JHEMC receiver is also a good option. Finishing up the drone is the DJI O3 Air Unit. DJI recently reduced the price of these down from $229 all the way down to $179, which is a pretty nice price cut. For my gear, I'm using DJI Goggles 2 and the Radio Master Pocket ELRS version. And that's it for the parts, so let's move on to the build. The first step is to assemble the SpeedyB frame. It comes with soft mounts for both the O3 air unit as well as smaller analog cameras, which is really nice. And interestingly, the frame comes vacuum sealed, which I've never seen before. And I'm not sure why they do this, so if anyone knows, please let me know. But it's a nice premium touch, I guess. The frame itself is designed really well with a lot of features, but that does make it complicated to put together. SpeedyB does provide nice full color instructions for this, which helps in assembling the frame a lot, but it still almost feels like you need four hands to try and put this together. And the main culprit is the hidden capacitor bay, which is located right in the middle of the frame. And to assemble this, you have to align four separate interlocking carbon plates with each other, and I ended up having to break out some tweezers to help me align things properly. But besides that, the frame went together really smoothly, and overall I can't believe the value they packed into this frame for just 35 bucks. Next, it's time to do a dry fit of all the components onto the frame. The O3 is going to get screwed directly into the frame, and the power cables are routed under it. Capacitor mounting is an issue with most frames, but here, SpeedyB made a channel directly under the flight controller for the capacitor to sit in. It is going to take some careful bending of the capacitor leads to make sure it doesn't touch any of the conductive carbon fiber. Also, SpeedyB includes some small yellow 3D prints as insulators in case you want to help insulate the capacitor leads. First, solder the capacitor to the ESE. Next, solder the wires to the XT60 hard mount. The XT60 is included with the frame, and then for the wires, you can use the wires that comes with the SpeedyB stack. To solder the wires to the ESC, I recommend soldering everything in place. So you mount the XC60 to the frame, you mount the ESC to the frame, and then you can trim and solder the wires to the ESC so that they're the perfect length. Make sure the wires are tucked nicely into the channel so that the O3 can be mounted above the channel and the wires won't interfere with it. Now that we have a power connector, it's time to test for shorts using a smoke stopper. We're all good here, so next up are the motors. To keep the motor wires tidy, I bought some plastic wire protectors for a couple bucks. I know these aren't very practical and that they'd break in a really hard crash, but I think they look pretty cool. 
Next, I routed the wires around the inside of the stack to make it look tidier, and I think it looks pretty good. Soldering is always the most difficult part of any build, so I always recommend a good soldering iron like the pine sill, which is what I'm using, and also make sure you use some decent rosin core solder. With all the motors wired up, next it's time to mount the O3 air unit. How it's mounted is that you take out four of the screws on the O3, and then SpeedyB provides longer versions of those same screws that you use to attach it through the frame. And then to wire it up, the SpeedyB stack already has a connector for the O3 air unit, so there's no soldering required, it's just plug and play. Mounting the O3 antenna is also really clever. They provide an aluminum collar that locks onto the antenna base and that slides into the 3D print at the back of the frame. It's definitely the best O3 mounting solution I've ever seen on a frame and I'm very impressed. Next, it's time to wire up the Express LRS receiver. Solder the wires to the receiver itself and then solder the other ends of the wires to the flight controller. On these PDB flight controllers, we wire the receiver to UART2. That's all the electronics wired up, so the next step is to set the drone up in beta flight. This setup process is a little tedious and boring, so I'll save that for the very end of this video for those of you who have the drone in front of you and want to follow along. Anyways, let's pretend that's done and we can move on to putting the finishing touches on the drone. For any screw that threads into metal, you want to put a little bit of blue Loctite on the screw to prevent it from vibrating out. For props, I'm using Mango Lossy props since they match the Speedy B yellow color perfectly, and make sure the props go on the right way. And with that, the build is complete. I think the yellow and black theme came together really nicely, and I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. And not only does it look like a bee, it'll sound like an angry swarm of bees once it's in the air. So let's take it out for a flight. All right, it's a nice day out at the pond, so it's time to take the five inch out for a test flight. As we fly, let's talk a little bit about the frame, the props, and the props in view. This BDB frame comes in two versions, the XH version, which is what I have, as well as the DC or dead cat version, which pushes the motors backwards in order to get the props out of the camera view. You're free to pick whichever version that you prefer in your build. The instructions are pretty much the same. For this build, I wanted the build to focus more on pure performance rather than video quality, so I decided to go with this XH version, which does have a little bit of the props in the field of view. And also to help mitigate this, I did switch out the front props to the clear ones that are included in the Mango Lossy prop set so that it isn't as noticeable, and I think it does work pretty well this way. And if the props do bother you, then no problems, just pick up the dead cat version of the frame and you won't see any props. Anyways, flying this modern 5-inch build is really, really fun. There's a good reason the 5-inch drone is one of the most common in the FPV world. There's just so much power packed into a really, really nimble drone. I'm flying with an ND8 filter on the O3 camera, so there's a bit of extra motion blur in the footage, and it's just so much fun to zoom along the pass, and it feels like I'm in a movie. I think I did mess up on the camera settings a little. I'm flying at 60 FPS with a fixed 1 over 60 shutter speed, and I think that's causing a few stutters in the video recording. So next time I'll fix the shutter speed to the proper 1 over 120, and that should get rid of any of the stuttering in the footage. Here's the in-goggles view of this flight, so this is exactly what I'm seeing when I'm flying. This is the really great thing about digital FPV. The footage is just so clear and smooth compared to analog, and it really makes you feel immersed and like you're actually there flying in the drone. If you haven't switched to digital FPV yet, I'd really recommend it. I know it's a big investment, but it's definitely worth it. Walksnail is really affordable with their Goggles L, and also DJI is set to release their own set of budget box goggles soon. The only one downside for this drone is the noise. These things get very, very loud at high throttle values. One time when I was flying, a jogger passing by said that they thought a goat was dying until they got closer and saw it was just a drone. So it's important to take care when flying these things and not disturb the environment too much. Overall, a modern 5-inch drone like this is probably one of the most fun drones you can fly, and that's why they're the most popular class of FPV drone right now. If you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and stick around if you want to see the beta flight setup for this drone. First up, the flight controller. Before we solder anything to this or even plug it into the ESC, let's plug it into our computer running beta flight to make sure it's recognized properly, and we can upgrade the firmware as well. So I'm plugging it into my computer now, and that's a good sign. We see it's recognized. We get a warning that the accelerometer isn't calibrated, but that's going to be fine. 
So let's go over here to the top left and look at the firmware version and we can see we're on 4.3.2 which is a really really old version. Betaflight's all the way up to 4.5 right now. So we definitely want to upgrade the firmware on this. I'm going to take a note of the target. It's speedyb f 405 v 3 If you have the V4 of course you should use the V4. But I have the V3 here so I'm going to remember it's the f 405 v 3 And I'm going to go over here and hit activate bootloader DFU. I'm going to wait a couple seconds. And at the top right, you see it's a DFU STM32 bootloader. That's right. If instead you get like a Windows error, like device not recognized or something, you need to run Impulse RC driver fixer to fix the driver. I've already run that on this computer before, so that's why it's working immediately for me. DFU STM32 bootloader. That's correct. And so we're going to hit update firmware. And now we're at the firmware upgrade screen. We're going to choose our board. Uh, auto detect isn't going to work because we're in DFU mode, so we're going to manually type in our speedy B F405 and V3 or V4, whichever one you have. Since I have the V3, I'm going for the V3. And now I'm going to select a firmware, which is going to be the latest one. So for now, it's 4.5.1. And you can see before it was 4.3.2, so, so the old firmware was from 2022. That's really old. So yeah, we're going to upgrade to the latest firmware, 4.5.1. And if we go down here, um, all the defaults should be fine. Crossfire for Express LRS, DShot, that's fine. So let's load the firmware online. It's going to be downloading the firmware. And then let's flash the firmware. All right, we get programming successful. That's great. So let's go ahead and hit connect. And let's connect to the flight controller. It says the accelerometer isn't calibrated. And while we have this thing laying flat on the ground, let's just quickly calibrate it. So let's hit that. And now we should no longer see that error. And it looks like we can see at the top left, we're on 4.5.1. That's great. And our, our little drone model seems to be working. So fantastic. All right, that's great. The flight controller is working all properly. Now it's time to connect the flight controller to the ESC. And we're going to update the ESC's firmware to BlueJay. But first, we've got to make the physical connection between them using the little cable. Now, if Betaflight is open, we're going to actually want to disconnect from it because we're going to go into the ESC configurator instead. So we're going to actually hit disconnect. Now, we're going to go to a web browser and go to escconfigurator.com. This is a website we can use to upgrade the firmware of our ESC. So we're going to hit connect. And it automatically connects to the open COM port. I'm going to go down over here to the right and we're going to do read settings. So that's going to read what ESC we have. So let's hit read settings. And there we go. We can scroll through our four ESCs. Hopefully all four are detected. ESC 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep, that's correct. And we can see that they're running BL Heli S right now. BL Heli S is completely fine, but a lot of people like upgrading to BlueJ so you can get bi directional D shot and a whole bunch of other nice little features. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So let's hit um, flash all ESCs. Here we can select which firmware we can upload. So instead of BL Hell yes, we're gonna go with BlueJ. The ESC type should have been auto detected. So it's the JH50. And for the version, we want the latest version of BlueJ. PDL, PWM frequency, we're gonna go for the middle of the road 48 kilohertz. And then I'm gonna hit flash. It's going to take a minute, but here you can see it says it's flashing ESC1, and it's going to go through all of the four ESCs individually and flash all of them with BlueJ. There's one done. All right, great. All four ESCs are flashed with BlueJ. You can scroll through these, and they say they're all flashed with BlueJ. That's great. We can hit disconnect, and our work here is done. All right, let's start. All right, let's start off by binding the Express LRS receiver to our Radio Master Pocket. So I'm gonna plug in power in our receiver. Should be getting power as well. And our, rec and our receiver should be getting power as well. So I'm gonna wait one minute for the Express LRS receiver to go into binding mode and then I'll connect to it and enter in my binding phrase. Okay, it's been one minute. The red LED is flashing very fast, which means it's in Wi-Fi mode. So now I'm gonna go over to my laptop, to my wireless networks, and I'm gonna connect 
to ExpressLRSRx using the password ExpressLRS. Next, I'm going to go to a web browser and go to the IP address 10.0.0.1. We can scroll down to the binding phrase option. This is where you can attach your own unique binding phrase. I use the binding phrase pineapple. My Radio Master Pocket already has a binding phrase pineapple in it from when I, um, to do that, I plug it into my computer running Express LRS Configurator and I entered my binding phrase through there. And once, you, and once you do that once, you never have to do it again. It'll just automatically connect to any other receiver with the same binding phrase, which is why I'm putting pineapple here for the receiver. And all I have to do is hit save. Our Express LRS receiver now has the binding phrase pineapple in it, so it should be all set to go. So let me disconnect the power from it. It'll only work after a reboot. Let's turn on the Radio Master Pocket. Welcome to HTX. Switch warning. Disarmed. Acro mode on. Now let's plug it into our computer and try and set everything up. Now that it has power and our radio is powered up, this should be connected. And we do get telemetry bars on the radio, which is good. We'll go over to the receiver tab and see if it's recognized. And it's not. So. Let's go to the ports tab to see what's going on. And we don't have anything selected for serial RX. That's the main issue there. So we're going to go over to UART2, which is what we soldered it to, and enable serial RX there. We're going to hit save and reboot. All right, now let's go back to the receiver tab and let's jiggle the sticks and we get a proper response. Great, so the receiver is being read properly by the flight controller. Now we have to set up the modes. You should always have the arming switch set up to aux one and whatever physical switch you have on the radio is going to depend on your personal preference. I use this switch over here. So if I hit this switch, you can see that aux one goes up to 2000, which is armed. Disarmed, Disarmed is a thousand. And then I, and then to switch into angle mode, I use this rocker here on aux two. You can see that aux 2 goes up to 2000 when I hit that switch. So let's go over to the modes tab and set up those modes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through all the modes to make sure there's nothing already preset at the factory. Yep, there's nothing there. So let's go ahead and add our ranges. So we're going to add range on arm to aux 1. And remembering that it was the higher values of, and then set that to 2000. And then we're going to add a range to angle mode, and that was aux 2. That's also going to be our higher range. So let's hit save on that. Those are the two main modes that are most important for flying. Now we can do a quick test. We can arm it. Armed. You can see it goes to armed. Disarmed. And then we can go ahead and move to angle mode. Angle mode. And it goes into angle mode. Great. Acro mode on. So our receiver is all set up properly. That's fantastic. I'm going to remember to hit save here. And now it's time to set up the motors. So I'm going to disconnect power from the drone because we will need to be powering up the entire flight stack at the same time to set up the motors. So let me take a battery and let's plug it into the drone. And then we'll plug in the USB. Great. All right, so now let's go over to the motors tab to set up the motors. To make this a little easier, let's reorient the quad so it's facing the same way beta flight is facing. So there we go, the quad is facing up the same way over here. So you can see the flight controller needs to know which motor positions the motors are in, as well as which direction the motors are spinning. So first we're gonna go over to the reorder motors wizard. This is usually correct, but you still wanna double check every time just in case. And of course, remember no props on at all when you're doing beta flight setup, because these motors are gonna spin and you don't wanna cut your fingers. So reorder motors, I understand the risks, the props are off, and let's start the wizard. So it's spinning this bottom right motor, so I'm gonna click the bottom right. Spinning top right, spinning bottom left, and spinning top left. Great. So now we can just hit save, and we're done with that part. So that's the motor order done. Now we have to go and fix the motor direction. 
So let's hit motor direction. I understand the risks. And I like to do this individually, so I'm going to hit individually instead of the automatic wizard. And so now uh, we can go through each motor and see which way they spin. So let's start with motor one on the bottom right. So if I click it, it's going to start spinning, and this should be spinning clockwise. So let's see which way it's spinning. Oh, this is spinning the wrong way. So I'm very lightly putting my finger on the edge of the bell. I don't want to get my finger caught in the top, that can hurt. But just very lightly on the edge of the bell, you can tell which way the motor is spinning. And I can tell it's spinning counterclockwise, which is wrong. So let me hit reverse. And now that's correct. So just by clicking the reverse button and testing it, that's how you set the motor direction. So this is now the correct direction. So now we can move on to motor number two. This one should be spinning counterclockwise. And this one's spinning clockwise. So this one is wrong as well. So we just hit reverse. And now it's spinning counterclockwise. So we fixed that one. Let's go to number three. This one is spinning clockwise when it should be spinning counterclockwise. So this one is wrong as well. We're zero for three so far. So we just hit reverse. Now it's spinning in the correct direction. So great. We're good there. Now, finally, number four. Let's see if this one is spinning in the right direction or not. It's not. <laughs> so this time we got really unlucky. On my 3.5 inch build, I got really lucky and all the motor directions were correct, all four of them. And this one we got unlucky and all four are wrong. So we had to hit reverse on that one. And now it is spinning clockwise. Cool. So all of our motor orders and motor directions are all set. So now we're good to go there. Okay, finally, the next step is to set up our O3 air unit. It looks like the default settings already properly have it um, kind of set up. So you could see UART1 is set up as MSP, and the peripheral is MSP plus display port, which is the correct setup for the DJI O3. So this might be already set to go, so let me grab my DJI goggles. Now we are on a little bit of a race against time here, because the DJI O3 air unit, once it connects to the goggles, it's going to start getting hot. So until I get a fan on it, I'm going to work as quickly as possible. If you don't want to do this little race against the clock, you should always get a, a computer fan or some other kind of fan to get airflow flowing over this um, so it doesn't overheat. So yeah, it's connected to the goggles and I can already feel it getting extremely hot. I've already bound this O3 air unit before to these goggles, so I am getting a good picture signal here. So actually what I'm going to do is the next step with this process is the OSD setup, which actually does take a little bit of time. So I'm going to do that after I set up my fan. All right, I found a little fan setup. This is actually a computer fan that I converted into a little drone stand. So I have a computer fan with some 3D printed standoffs and a little grate here. So I can set my drone right on top and I'm going to put my O3 directly into the line of airflow there. And then it's powered via 12 volts, so I actually bought this little 12 volt um, or USB-C phone charger to 12 volt adapter, which I soldered a cable to, so this will power on the 12 volt fan. Very handy to have this kind of a cooling stand. So let's plug this in, and now let's set up the on-screen display. So right now our on-screen display is bare, and it's properly set by default to HD. Click the HD button if it's not already set there. And now you're going to add your elements that you like. You don't have to follow along exactly as I do, but here's my core ones I do. I do artificial horizon, battery average cell voltage, current draw, million hours drawn, um, craft name. i got to remember to update the craft name. Let's do crosshairs too. Why not? Uh, is there anything else we need? Let's go down over here and throttle position is kind of fun as well as our two timers. And that should be good. So those are all the elements that I want. Let's go over here and arrange them to be in the right position. So I like having the voltage right in the middle craft name can shove at the bottom milliamp hours our current information is going to go on the bottom left so milliamp hours drawn and current um, throttle position on the top right somewhere around here maybe timers on the bottom left so i'm going to go through and refine these a bit later we have fly minutes on top then on minutes on the bottom and that's it. So let me take a peek through my goggles now just to see how this looks. That looks pretty good actually. 
I'm not going to move the elements to the all the way to the edges of the screen because um, on my DJI goggles, the edges of the screen are blurry for me because they just don't work for my head. So I'm going to keep them a little bit towards the uh, middle of the screen right there. So that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit save on that. Um, next, there's a couple things I need to remember to do. First, I want to update the craft name. Let's go into configuration. This is because when I record the DVR, I want to remember which uh, drone I'm flying. So we're going to say this is the Mario 5. Um, oh, actually, and while we're here, let's set the maximum arm angle to 180 degrees, which means we can arm or disarm no matter which direction the quad is facing. So hit save and reboot on that. Finally, let's actually go back over to the motors, because since we flashed Blue Jay to this, we can take advantage of bi-directional D-Shot. Let's go ahead and move down to D-Shot 300, which will be just fine, but then let's enable bi-directional D-Shot, yes. Flight controller and the speed controller stacked right below it, that means they can communicate with each other about how the motors are doing. Before, without Blue Jay, without bi-directional D-Shot, it's just the flight controller telling the speed controller what to do without getting any feedback from the speed controller on what the motors are actually doing. So we'll do that. We'll hit save and reboot. We can go back to the motor tab just to verify that the changes have stuck. If the changes have stuck, that means it is properly working. So yep, we're back here. It's still on DSHOT 300 and bi-directional is enabled. So that's great. And as a kind of a sanity check, Let's go back through the motor direction wizard just to make sure our changes have saved. So um, I understand the risks, the props are off. Um, now when we click uh, one of the motors, let's do this motor 4 here. Before they were all reversed so we changed it, but now it should be fine. So this one should be spinning clockwise. It is spinning clockwise so it looks like all of our changes have been saved. That's great, so we can just close out of that. So great, our drone is all set up to go. So let's finish buttoning the drone up, adding all the remaining screws, adding thread lock to the screws, and then we could take it on a test flight.